All right, I'm back. I haven't blown it up yet. I drove it for, I don't know, a week and a half, two weeks now since I got the belt to stay on and kind of got it together. I just kind of band-aided it together tune-wise and I just have been staying out of boost. Um, that's what I've been doing. So we need to get this thing tuned. I'm gonna do some kind of old school tricks to get it tuned and then we're gonna have some fun. But first, we need to fix the snout seal. It leaks so bad, oil is just flinging and flying out of this thing. I fill it up every day. It's horrible, I hate it. So we're gonna fix the snout seal first and then we're gonna get to all the tuning here. I press the pulley off and change the seal. Then I filled it up with some Mobile One 5W30. It was recommended over the very expensive supercharger oil. I used an old soap hand pump and a hose to actually fill this thing up. A funnel wouldn't fit. Hey guys, I'm testing for vacuum leaks. Um, I made this DIY vacuum leak tester. If you go on YouTube and search for that, a bunch of people have done it. So I made it, it took like two seconds to make. I had a couple things laying around and it works okay, but it's not excellent. I think I can make a better one. So if you want me to make a better one for cheap, leave a comment and I'll do that for you. All right, the next step to try and keep this thing from exploding on me is I need to adjust timing. I need to do something, we need to pull timing out under boost. So what I'm gonna do, and this is kind of a band-aid, is I'm gonna take initial timing out. So it's at five degrees right now, that's what the manual calls for. I'm gonna go down to zero degrees, and I'm hoping that brings the whole map down five degrees and keeps everything safe for the boost levels we run and we keep everything from pinging, blowing up, melting, all that good stuff. So let's adjust the timing and then we'll go from there. So five degrees initial timing wasn't enough. I actually ended up leaving the timing jumper out and I timed the total timing to about 35 degrees total timing, revving it up at idle. Um, it's a little lazy that way, it's not great, but that's where I could set it and have it not ping anywhere under any load. So that's what I went with to get by for now. All right, we got the snout seal fixed finally. We've got the vacuum leaks fixed, and now we've got the timing set so that we won't ping because of timing now. What we need to do is rich in the mixture under boost. So what we can do is install a fuel management unit. Uh, they used these a lot in the 90s and early 2000s uh, before like computers were more common to do like an aftermarket computer. So. Long story short, what this does is, is under boost pressure, it increases the fuel pressure, which increases the, makes it richer under boost. Um, so I put this one on, it was the cheapest one I could possibly find, and it didn't seem to work. So then I went and I bought a good one, a name brand one, and that one didn't work. So what I figured out is my fuel pump doesn't put it out enough pressure. Uh, it was basically maxed out in its pressure already in stock level. So I went ahead and I installed a different pump, and here's what I did. All right, guys, I have the stock pump here, and this is actually like a Ford Astrovan pump or Chevy or Chevy Astrovan. I don't know, space toasters. And uh, it's supposed to flow more. It's supposed to have 85 psi, and it was like 70 bucks. So it was pretty cheap. So I'm gonna cobble that in there. I didn't even, I couldn't get the plug for it. They didn't sell it at the auto parts store because they're idiots, I guess. Uh, so I soldered wires in there and rigged them up. And we're gonna rig it up in here and then we're gonna see if we can hit some boost. I've done it. I've cobbled it into here. Uh, let's throw it back in the truck and see if it pumps the right way because I don't know if I have it backwards or not. All right, so with the new fuel pump, everything's working correctly, but it still needs to be a little bit richer. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna mess with the air flow meter. That's that thing with the little flapper door. Um, so let me show you how to do that. 
basically what I did is I'm riching up as much as possible with it still running okay. And that's where I'm going to start. I'd rather be too rich than too lean. Okay, so this is the airflow meter. The, this is the top removed from it. This is your, there's like a spring in here and you can move this gear to basically rich in the fuel mixture. I'm already eight clicks richer and it still wants more it seems like. So that's how we rich in that. And then um, you can actually do this too when it's idling. This is the flapper. So you can actually grab this and turn it a little richer, see if it likes it or not and get a little bit of idea that way um, of what it wants for the idle. The other thing you can do here is this is the uh, bypass. This bypass is around the flapper for idle, so you can dial your idle in. So right now I have it jammed all the way down because I did this eight clicks and jammed that down and I wasn't sure if I had vacuum leaks or what was going on. Um, so I just did that to get it running basically. So what really needs to happen is I need to loosen this up, uh, richen this more, figure out where this wants to be, and then have this open a little bit because it should be open, not jammed all the way down. And then that gives me some adjustability on the idle. I need to richen this up. And I need to go for a ride and see if that helps or not. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be good or not. We'll see. You're not going to be able to run high boost, uh, probably 8 PSI max, 
And I mean, that's it. Uh, I have to say later fuel injection is a little bit different, but at the end of the day, like probably eight PSI I could run. So I'm happy to prove that, you know, correct. Um, I'm happy to say, hey, I built a supercharger manifold and everything, like a whole kit, and it's working. That's pretty cool. Um, most people buy these M M90 superchargers, and they say they're going to do something, and they never do anything with it. So I did it. It's done. It's supercharged. <laughs> so that's cool. My manifold. I had a lot of people say, oh, cylinders one and two and three and four are going to be rich or lean or whatever because the manifold design. All those people are wrong. I looked at the spark plugs, that's kind of how I tuned this thing, and they're consistent, you know, front to back, consistent. There's no deviations, there's no major variations there. So all those people are wrong. So at the end of the day, don't trust anybody behind a keyboard. They're most likely an idiot that's never worked on it. Uh, go out, use your brain, do some, you know, try some things and figure it out that way. Don't let somebody on the internet tell you you can't do it. So that's it. That's where we're at with this. I do want to go to a standalone fuel injection. I do want to do that. I think I'm leaving a lot of power on the table. But at the end of the day, I wanted to prove you could do it this way. So I've used Megasquirt before. I've looked into Speedwino. Let me know what cheap fuel injection I could use. Give me ideas. Um, I've used Tuner Studio before, so if it uses that, that's a big, that's, that helps a lot. Um, it's been a while, but I, I've used that before. I'm a little bit familiar with it. So let me know what, what to use for that. And if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. And I'm going to leave you guys off with a burnout. Let's do a burnout with this thing. Finally, it never did burnouts before, and now it does. So let's leave it off there. And I'll see you guys again soon.